From the famed Oyster Case to the Milgauss and the Deep Sea Watches, Rolex has made a name for itself as not just one of the most prestigious and beloved in the watch industry, but one of the most innovative. The last major innovation came in 2014 with the Skydweller. Since then, we've had the dawn of weightless social media hype sending brand recognition into the stratosphere and new Instagram friendly releases like this. Is this still the brand that is leading the way in innovation or are we living through the years of their transition? What's up guys, I'm Vinny and welcome back to the channel. If you haven't subscribed as yet, please do that down below. Now let's get a little bit of context to this then and look back at really the colourful history that Rolex have had with innovation. In 1926, we saw the patenting of the screw down crown and the world's first waterproof watch. 1931, the patenting of the automatic winding system. In 1945, the patenting of the waterproof chronometer to feature a date display for the first time. 1953 saw the first waterproof watch to survive a plunge to depths of 10,000 meters. 1954, the first GMT watch with the ability to simultaneously display three different time zones. And 1956, the first watch with guaranteed magnetic force resistance up to 1,000 gauss. More recent innovations include the Paracom hairspring in the year 2000, more resistant to magnetic force for extra time keeping Keeping accuracy. 2005 saw the introduction of Cerachrom bezel inserts, gone with the days of scratched up aluminium bezels. 2008 saw the arrival of Chromalite Loom, designed to last up to eight hours. The on the fly adjustment marvels that are the Easy Link and GlideLock systems were also introduced in the early 2000s. And most recently in 2014, with the Skydweller, the introduction of the Ring Command system for simple setting and no need for extra crap and pushers. But that was 2014 and really since then not much has happened. Yes, we've seen the introduction of titanium used for the first time in their watches on the Yachtmaster 42 release, but that isn't really innovation because titanium Omega have been using it for well over 10 years. And that brings me swiftly on to this particular piece that I am wearing on my wrist today. This is the Chiga Design Blue Planet Gilded Edition. And it is superbly innovative, a watch born from a new way of thinking about watch design, a handless timepiece. This is real technical innovation, something that we've never seen before. And as a watch nerd myself, I appreciate that. And that's why it won the GPHG Challenger Award in 2021. This watch features a new mechanical movement. Now on a typical movement, uh, you would witness a 30 degree rotation of the hour hand followed by a 360 degree rotation of the minutes hand. Chiga have here developed a new gear ratio on which the hour hand, which is the earth, rotates by 30 degrees and the minute chapter ring rotates by 390 degrees. How do you read it? The only hand is the mariner symbol by pointing at the still hour chapter ring and the rotating minute chapter ring, time can be read. So bear this in mind too. This won a GPHG award for challenging the watch industry with new technical innovations from a brand that's been in existence for only a few years. How many times have Rolex won a GPHG award? None. So is it now down to micro brands to fill that space for innovation that Rolex used to occupy that they seemingly have moved away from? Innovation can be defined as the practical implementation of ideas that result in the introduction of new goods or services or improvement in offering goods or services. That innovation includes the actual offering of those services. And obviously it is Rolex's job to sell luxury. We absolutely have seen in the last five years a change in their service, a change in the standard of their service. And I wonder whether they are moving away from technical innovations to really become the master marketeer, actually innovate and change what luxury means. It is no longer a product that you can buy or attain if you have the money to do so, but you have to wait for that. Even if you have the money, you have to earn that particular prestigious watch 
Are they redefining what luxury means with wait lists and all of this rubbish at authorised dealers? I also believe that gone are the days where the consumer now values technical innovations for brand perception and brand value as much as what they used to. But rather nowadays, they value the opinions of influencers. Gone are the days of the eye-catching adverts boasting about how revolutionary the Oyster case is, how the GMT function is a watch for jet-setting business people, capturing the imaginations of all those who aspired to reach the pinnacle of their professions, facilitated by a watch made for leaders in industry. Now the world has changed since the dawn of social media. People look towards influencers to determine their buying habits, Gen Z or Millennials, those generations have different goals in life, fame, following, or to live the luxury lifestyle while broadcasting it to the world. That's why the brand has turned to Instagram friendly releases, visually impacting designs to capture those influencers, engage with the modern and younger demographic, a demographic that doesn't give a monkeys about innovation. Technical innovation is now reserved for old fashioned enthusiasts like me. I think we're also living through a period in Rolex's history where they are actually transitioning into a new market segment. They are moving away from satisfying old-fashioned consumers that they used to look after and towards a new market segment up there right at the very top of the watchmaking industry along with Vacheron Constantin, Audemars Piguet and Patek Philippe. The holy trinity of course or as Rolex would prefer it to be the holy quadrant. Of course in my last video a couple of weeks ago I spoke about my experiences at Watches and Wonders and the fact that the, there was such a stark contrast between the efforts that Tudor made in their booth and the efforts that Rolex made in their booth to engage with the people at the show. And I think since then I've thought about this real juxtaposition of two brands that are essentially under the same umbrella, they are the same company, that were positioned in the salon of the Watches and Wonders Geneva show right next to each other. On the one hand you had a brand that made no effort and right next door Tudor a considerable effort and I do believe that that was all purposeful that was all part of Rolex's marketing master plan Rolex's innovation of their service Rolex the parent company are trying to force you towards Tudor with transparent case backs being introduced this year and movements finished to a degree I think this is all part of a package, the introduction of titanium as well, it is all part of a package to try and inflate the retail prices of their watches on average to a higher level so that they can push further up that ladder. I think we're in a period of history where if you want to buy a Rolex, buy one now because in future the price point will just be a lot, lot higher. And we're seeing little things that Rolex are doing to try and push up their retail prices. And to wrap this up and just really hit this point home, when we look at the typical Tudor watch now, that T-Fit clasp is better than a Rolex clasp with the glide lock mechanism. The glide lock mechanism is, is quite stiff. You have to snap it, you have to clip it into place. Whereas the T-Fit clasp is actually spring operated and is very easy, much easier to adjust on the fly than Rolex's version. So we've got some innovations, not just that, but also Tudor used ceramic bearings in the uh, locking mechanism of their clasps as well, which Rolex don't have. It's still a steel bearing, which will wear down over time. Anyway guys, let me know what you think about this transitional phase that Rolex are going through. Am I right? Do you think they are moving towards trying to push that ceiling of joining the Holy Trinity and the innovation no longer matters for them? Do you think that brands like this Chiga Design Blue Planet are the new players in that whole innovative space in watchmaking that will drive the industry forward. Thanks very much for watching me. Go check out beatthewaitlist-watches.com and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.